Hi, 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 felting fans. Today I'm gonna to start a new series on a Labrador that I have to make. Um, she is a senior lab, a lab mix, and I'm gonna make her in this lying down pose like this. This channel is all about needle felting, so if you have any interest or you wanna see how I do anything, please feel free to like it, make comments, and subscribe. I always like working on a fresh sheet as opposed to directly on the wool and I cut a new one today so it's super clean. And lately I've been using 16 gauge wire for my armatures. It's stiffer and it is easier to pose. I'm going to pick sort of this size for my front legs. Lately, I've been, we'll just do the legs first, but then I've been wanting to make the bodies a little bit smaller because I think they've been too long. So we're going to, rather than having three equal pieces, I'm going to do a smaller piece for the body. Like that's the, we'll say that's the head, body, and then like a tail. Then I just bend the pieces and kind of put them in place where I know they're going to end up. Pull a really skinny and short strand of core wool. And uh, this is the part I hate the most. So squirrely. Basically, all you're trying to do is wind your skinny piece of core wool around the wire and anchor it into place. Just kind of wind it all around like this. Wind, 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 wind a little bit winding it all around and then I will stab it a little bit more in place. But I'm just kind of making this anchor for this, these two pieces first. Once you have all of the pieces secured together, you'll get your core wool and now make a really skinny, long, 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 long piece. The longer the better so that you can wind it all around the wire and not have to glue it. After pulling all the wire off of the main core wool, I stretch it out and make it as skinny as I can without pulling it apart. Then you anchor that long strand into place and begin winding around the wire. You'll find as you go, your strand of wool gets twisted. So sometimes you have to stop and untwist it from the bottom. Now, when you get to the end of a wire, you want to make sure that you wind your wool over the end like this. This is going to be where the paws are, so you want less wire here and more wool. I'm trying to keep the wool untwisted and also pull it really taut so it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to start winding it back down the leg toward that anchor of wool well, I can then stab it into place and hold the whole thing together. 
when the strand of wool is really long, sometimes it's really hard to keep it from twisting all over the place, but do your best. Just keep untwisting it as you wind it back up the wire. Now this piece of wool is so long that I can actually wind it around the anchor and then just keep going around the other bits of wire. Same thing at the ends, just making sure there's a lot more wool at the ends so that I can tuck it into place with my needle later. And when you get to the end, you stab it into the anchor to hold the whole thing in place. Then take your needle and tuck in all of the ends so that all of the extra wool you have on the ends of the wire are nice and tight and tucked in. Now I've wrapped all the wire with wool and I'm ready to start bending it into shape. So the first thing I'll do is make like a little pelvic bone on one side and a little chest on the other. I am not great at this, but usually at this point I'll stand it up and just make sure the legs are all the same size. Next I start to bend in the hips and the back legs. You can see I'm not being too fussy about the shape, admittedly because I'm not very good at doing this, but I just want general back leg shape. This dog's going to be lying down so they don't have to be perfect. And next I just put little elbows in the front legs. So once it can stand and the legs look pretty much like dog legs, then I could kind of bend them around to make the dog either sitting or lying down or doing other poses. This dog is going to be lying down, so first I'm going to pull the front legs forward as if she's lying on them and then the back legs down and push the hips up a little bit more so it looks like she's got them bent a lot. Then once the legs are pretty much in place I'll pull the tail down and that'll be flat like that and push the head forward a little bit and there it's kind of a rough dog lying down pose. Eventually her paws will be crossed in the front and her head will be lying on them, but we're not going to do that just yet. If we wanted to do something cute like have her lying on her side with her legs splayed on one side, you could do that here. You see you could push them over and she's like laying on her side kind of. But again, that's not what this particular dog is going to do, so I'm going to straighten her out. And now it's time to fill her in. So now I grab chunks of core wool and just start to fill in the chest area, her hip area, and stab it all into place.
Now I'm going to wrap a piece around the front, start at the top and pin it down and then wrap it around the front and that will be her chest. And then just chunk by chunk, I just keep filling her in. Now I'm going to start wrapping her neck and shape the head. A lot of people make the head separately and then they put it on, but I still have not learned how to do that. So I always have to put the head on at the same time as I make the body so I can kind of get the size correct. Then I wind up some wool like in a little cone and I use this to start the nose. I pull the base apart a little bit and then stick it on the face and start stabbing it in. So the nose is really, really long here, but I'm gonna keep stabbing it to make it firmer and shorter. So I'm going to add more wool because I think now the nose is too short, but the whole idea is just to keep adding wool and shaping it with your needle until it's pretty close to how you want it to look. Don't forget though, we're going to add more wool in the correct color as a top coat, so that will also change the shape. And now the body is relatively close to what I want it to look like, and I'm just going to add a little blob of wool where each eye is going to go for the dog's eye sockets. both of the eye sockets and now I'm just going to put in the eyeballs. I'm using a 32 heavy duty needle to do the initial poking and then I'll use an awl to make a bigger hole and put the eyes in their place. Once I like where they are, then I'm ready to glue them in place. So I pull them out halfway, put a little blob of glue behind them, and push them in. And that's pretty much it for the core body. Now I'm ready to start putting top wool on. Well, thank you so much for joining me today as I made the core body and added the eyeballs for this senior black lab that I'm making. So if you'd like to see how I add the top coat and make her face and give her personality, come back again.